So now we, we're going to move to the next talk by Jacek Susan. And Jacek will, will give a talk on faith and reason, reflection on, on anthems of Canterbury, Unum Argumentum. So let's have uh, some medieval philosophy right now. Um, we're going to display Jacek's lecture, and after the lecture there will, there will be a time for the questions. Um, so please keep your questions in mind and ask them after the talk. Okay? Okay, so let's kick off with the lecture. I believe, I believe, writes Anselm, that I have shown by an argument which is not weak, that in my former book I proved the real existence of a being than which greater cannot be thought, and I believe that this argument cannot be invalidated by the validity of any objection. For so great force does the signification of this reasoning contain in itself that this being, which is the subject of discussion, is of necessity from the very fact that it is understood, proved also to exist in reality and to be whatever we should believe of the divine substance. This final fragment of Anselm's letter to Mund Gaunilo is the quintessence of what in the history of philosophy is known as the ontological proof of God's existence. This proof is attributed to Anselm of Canterbury, Canterbury although he himself never used the name proof in relation to his argument. Anselm himself called it only one argument, unum argumentum and not a proof. This is important because Anselm did not intend to prove the existence of God purely rationally, but his intention was to strengthen faith in God by means of a purely rational argument. The monk Gaunilo was the first who objected to Anselm's argument, however, he did not question the primacy of faith, but he had doubts about the rational correctness of argument. So. There should be clear that intention of Anselm thinking on God's existence has no connection, for example, with the speculations and objections against ontological proof, which were formulated for Immanuel, by Immanuel Kant, who postulated suspending of reason to do place for faith, what implying that God of faith does not coincide with the God of reason. But in this point of view, there is impossible to understand essence of Anselm's intuition of divine essence and understand the relation between faith and reason. In my presentation, I would like to show what is the essence of Anselm's argument. For this purpose, I divided my presentation into several parts. I begin by presenting Anselm's reasoning in four steps. Then I will present Gaunilo's objections to this reasoning then Anselm's reply. Finally, a short summary in the form of some conclusions. First step, primary point, priority of faith. Anselm says that he believes in order to understand, and he understands on, only in order to believe. So for him, first of all, there is necessary to have believing because only believer is able to understand. Anselm asks God to enlighten his mind and give him an understanding of divine essence. For Anselm, man has no proper image of God's being, because as a result of sin, man lost the ability to clearly understand God's being. So, in consequence, the human role is only passive. Man can be returned himself to God in prayer with a request, and he must wait, wait on God's grace. Anselm, Anselm believes that God grants man grace to know his nature in some content. This grace is manifested in the possibility of a comprehensive argument for the, for the existence of God. The main problem comes down to the question when a man is convinced that God positively has responded to the Anselm's request. Probably, the answer of this question lies in Anselm's conviction that only the possibility of to be sure of God's grace in this case is to find the absolute limit of human understanding as such, that is, to prove the final impassable limits of reasoning, because only then 
we can indicate the area of it, what can be known. So we could just say that Anselm wants to find the answer for the question, what is the limit of thinking and knowing as the boundary between faith and reason? Now, in short, about the Anselm's postulate about faith looking for understanding. Fides querens intellectum. Defining the boundaries of the rational knowledge indicates a demarcation line between the areas of faith and reason. Anselm's idea is to indicate precisely what can be known in one side and what falls exclusively with the realm of faith in the other side and only in faith on faith should be accepted. Anselm is sure that the very concept of God analyzed only by reason is incomprehensible and using this concept it is impossible to demonstrate his existence. Even more, regarding to the concept of God, we can think of the, his non-existence as a fool when he thinks that God does not exist. Therefore, Anselm must find for the mind, for the reason, another content ascribed to God, which could serve complexion of evidence. Anselm, such content is realized by the thesis that God is something than which nothing greater can be thought. Anselm uses his drawn from the faith, but already the result of a thinking of the content of faith, a thesis that is fundamental to all his argumentation. Second step in which we have two kinds of conditions. First conditions. Anselm says that he will create his evidence without appealing to the authority of the Bible. All arguments in his evidence will be based only on understanding and thinking. For Anselm, the only criterion in proving is a logical necessity. Nothing other than logical argumentation is taken into account. The second conditions. Man can think everything what he can think. Understanding has a primacy before thinking. There are two modes of existence. First existence in mind and the second in reality. It means outside of mind. Existence in reality is in fact something greater than existence only in, in, in intellect. The common procedure refers to the demonstrating the existence in reality starting from the existence in intellect and therefore the way of evidence is from the intellect to reality. Third step, schema of the Anselm's argument. The first stage is following. Knowing is not necessary for existence of something in our intellect because there can be something in intellect about what we do not know yet what it is. Anselm thinks that a fool who thought that God doesn't exist has in his intellect the concept of something than which greater cannot be thought, because he heard that it, that it is said to him and he understood it. The second stage. Something different is existence in intellect and existence outside of the intellect. Existence outside of the intellect is greater than existence only in the intellect. However, the basis condition of existence, both mental or real, is logical non-contradiction. And if both kind of existence exist, they must not be contradictory. So, if a fool can thought something, it must exist in his intellect. The third stage, the transition from existence in intellect to existence in reality is following. If in the intellect can only be something that is non-contradict, everything which exists in intellect not contradict. However, if we look at the thesis, something than which greater cannot be thought, it is not contradict because the relations of concepts used in this thesis are not contradict. In the inner relation between subject and predicate, we should see correct relation. But Anselm argues 
that correct relation is only possible if something than which greater cannot be thought exists not only in intellect but also in reality because if not in consequence something than which greater cannot be thought should not be this something because we can think about something greater uh, of it about a real existence as a result in our intellect would exist something self-contradictory because this something which uh, could be thought as the greatest would not be the greatest if one could think of something greater in real existence. However, it is impossible because everything which exists in intellect has internally consistent. It means it means is non-contradict. Therefore, Anselm, on the basis of the logical law of contradiction, shows the necessity of recognizing the existence of something not only in intellect but also in reality. Fourth step, return of faith. After demonstrating the, ne the necessary existence both in intellect in the reality of something than which nothing greater can be thought, Anselm tries to answer on the question, what is this something? And that he returns to faith, and for him this something is God. And this something is representation for us of divine beings so much of a reality that even it cannot be thought of as non-existence. This moment seems to be fundamental because Anselm identifies this something with God on the basis of faith, not logical reasoning. Here then we can see that Anselm's argument is not evidence of the existence of God, but is evidence of the existence of something than which nothing greater can be thought, which Christians should believe by the act of faith to be God. The essence of Anselm's argument lies in the fact that he shows how to use reason which serves faith, and only through faith reason can reach the limit of its thought, because that limit is God. Faith then precedes all reasoning, and without faith, reason cannot answer the question of what is this than which nothing greater can be thought. At the same time, man discovers that without God's grace and without God's illumination of human intellect, he is not able to know anything and think of anything as the greatest. Faith gives us the possibility of understanding. Now short about Gaunilo's objection. First objection. Gaunilo says that our understanding of something does not cause its existence in the intellect. And if so, it collapses the basis of Anselm's argument. According to him, in intellect, there could also be false contents which we could understand and which wouldn't have real existence. Gaunilo says Man has knowledge on existence only under rem. It means the words and the contents have logical and ontological sense only if we know what they are in reality. According to Gamilo, Anselm goes from the thinking something to the real existence of something, what is mistake? Because, for example, it, what is false, is also thought because it is non-contradictory. The only condition for existence in intellect, then, is to know it, not just think about it. Second objection of Gaunilo. Objection of Gaunilo. According to Gaunilo, in Anselm's argument, we can find an error of the necessary translation trans from, uh, from uh, intellect to reality. Gaunilo criticized Anselm's unfounded statement on the basis of the existence of something in the greatest in the intellect. This one should be exist in reality. This translation is at the best only possible, but in the case of Anselm's argument, this translation must be necessary what seems to be absurd. Now uh, Anselm's reply. Anselm emphasized that his reasoning may refer to only one case, that is to something than which nothing greater can be thought. He also points out that there is a fundamental difference between this content and Gaunilo's concept of something the greatest which we can thought. Anselm's concept is based not on the analyzing on in, uh, of individual things which exist in reality 
and could be known through the senses, because in this way we have no possibility to think about one thing which is the greatest. Here is the first error of Garnino. Anton claims that man does not understand the concept of God, which we can find in the mind of a fool, can be born the thought of God's non-existence. However, the thesis, something than which nothing greater can be thought, is understandable, even to fool, and this understanding is not the result of some kind of sensual experience. Anselm also indicates the difference between understanding in Latin intelligere and the cognition in, in Latin cogitare, of something that can, man can't think. Understanding of some, something based only on the law of contradiction. And Gaunino's objection about the false thing, which can exist in intellect, is incorrect, because there is the fundamental difference between logical contradictionary and the conception of truth. The last is analyzing relation between something which exists in intellect and something, something in reality. But the principle of both is the law of contradiction, which is primary. The point of Anselm's beginning is a a priori concept, which we have in our intellect as the gift of God. But Gaunilo wants to begin from the sensual experience of real things and their generalization in the contents of our intellect. Uh, it means a posteriori. According to Anselm, Gaunilo's way is incorrect in the aspect of realization of the postulate of faith looking for understanding. And now, finally, some conclusions. It is very interesting that in discussion between Anzal and Gaunino, the last one has no objection to the primacy of faith over understanding. Gaunino accepts Anzal's argument that we believe God is the greatest thing which can be thought. He is sure, however, that Anzal has illegally thought as necessary, move from the intellect to reality, which for Gaunilo seems only possible, and for Anselm's, of course, necessity. Thus, in Gaunilo's opinion, Anselm's argument is not well grounded, but he doesn't question the act of faith and its primacy. It is worth remembering that in the history of the problem of God's existence, Anselm has been attacked very often for trying to incorrectly prove that God is the greatest thing for our intellect, which for Anselm is only the object of faith. In this sense, Anselm shows proof of the existence of something than which nothing greater can be thought, and not of God. Anselm tries to strengthen to strength Yeah. Thank you very much, Jacek. And now we will start with the questions. For those who come, I remind to unmute yourself before you ask a question and then mute yourself again after, after uh, asking. And the same to you, Jacek, who will answer the questions. Um, first, we will start with the questions on site. Do you have any questions, people who are here in Krakow? Not many of them. Uh, if you have any questions to the Unum Argumentum and St. Anzo, I see no one. No? Okay. Um, so, um, dear participants on WebEx, do you have any questions to Jacek? Please, it's time to, you can uh, show yourself. Please don't be shy and uh, unmute yourself, ask the question and mute yourself again. Thanks. Go on. The floor is yours. Wojciech, I see raising hand. Uh, thank you very much for the really wonderful presentation. Uh, uh, it was very, very interesting. Uh, I have a simple question um, just to clarify things. The argument, the argumentation was given by uh, Anselm is for believers. Uh, so there is the predominance of faith that create some kind of context in which uh, this argument really makes sense. So what do you think? How 
um, how the faith is understood. What is really the faith in the, uh, in the Anselm's understanding? Where does it come from? Or, you know, more precisely, who is the believer that he has in mind somehow when he is creating and uh, developing this argumentation? This is my question. Thank you. Thank you very much for your question. Yeah, of course, uh, we must think about the uh, medieval area, medieval times, yes, and the specific aspect of understanding of uh, reality and understanding of relation between man and uh, transcendent being, it means God. And in this perspective, Azam try not to prove that God exists, but uh, only take some uh, some strange argument uh, on his uh, existence yeah and believe in my uh, in my opinion is a consequence something what is the point of start of uh, Anselm's argumentation it means the the, the the gift of God. Yeah, there is the, there is something what we could find in uh, uh, Platonic's uh, uh, conception of illumination. Yeah, uh, Platonic's are the ground for this conception. And Anselm uh, Anselm uh, think that we have the natural uh, gift of God for uh, understanding of his existence and his uh, essence, but there is not, of course, the full knowledge about the God uh, uh, existence and divinity essence. Yeah, and we must take some uh, boundary for our understanding, our knowing of reality, and if we take to this boundary, to this, to this, uh, to this, to this, uh, uh, Order, we could find the aspect of transcendental uh, reality of God. There is something like an intuition, and in my presentation, of course, there was the briefly uh, on uh, introduction to, to to the argumentation of Anselm's. But uh, I think that the the main problem and the main um, aspect of uh, Anselm's argumentation is. Uh, is to find in our mind and our intellect something what is the full boundary of um, uh, everything what we can know, we can think, and we can understand. And of course, there is the law of contradiction. Yeah, and in this in this point of view, the law of contradiction is something what can like uh, in metaphoric aspect like a bridge to understanding, to our intellect, to reality of God. Because God is some, what we can think uh, in, in, the, in the boundary, in the, in the, in the uh, structure of uh, law of contradiction. Uh, but we can know on him only uh, something what we uh, could find in, 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 his, uh, in, in his reality. And there is the effect of the gift of God. Uh, if you look at the proslogion and the text where we could find the, the, the answer argument, the answer start with a prayer to God. God, give me, if you, uh, if you want, yes, that I could understand that you exist and you, um, you, you, you have some, some specific nature. Uh, and the, the, the effect of Anselm's, uh, Anselm's understanding and Anselm's process of uh, argumentation for on God existence, uh, divine existence, is uh, is the the the, the uh, is is uh, is the uh, clearing that I have this gift from God. Yeah, and every one of us. Could, uh, could uh, do it as the individual, personal, and inner uh, inner experience. And there is, in my mind, uh, there is the aspect of modern and contemporary uh, contemporary uh, uh, validity of Anselm's argumentation. Yeah, because we could find on, uh, uh, on this in the perspective of historic perspective. Yes, but we could find in this the very important aspect for our for us as a as a experience of faith if i believe in god i could find his uh, uh, his nature of course in 
in in in the in the area of uh, law of contradiction. Yeah, and I think that the there is the result of uh, of the divine gift, divine gift for us. The, of course, the the, the reason of grace, as a, a, with a, with the point of view. Yeah, if I can say something more, uh, the, 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 the answer's argument is very important and very, very interesting because in the history of philosophy, we could find that the, the main problem of uh, argumentation and argument interpretation, answer interpretation for the few of uh, or many of uh, philosophers was not the problem of relation between faith and reason, but the problem of logical structure of his argumentation. And in this point of view, if you look at, for example, in the Descartes' uh, argumentation, René Descartes' argumentation, we could find a mistake in his argumentation if we uh, we could find in, in his uh, argumentation the, 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 the essence of Anselm's uh, point of view. Yeah, because for René Descartes, the, the point of start is uh, reason, for, for reason, is uh, is the thesis that God is the greatest thing uh, uh, which uh, which we could uh, we could thought we can we can thought, but there is not the uh, answer argumentation because in the answer argument we could find some another point of view. We believe that God is something uh, than which uh, nothing can be thought, and the start. Uh, from faith, yes, uh, uh, is is a ground for for uh, for seeking uh, the, the 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 logical aspect and logical scheme of argumentation. Uh, for, okay. <laughs> Thank you for answering this. Can I have? Can I ask a more question? Because we we have some question from the stream, and this is the very long question. It has. <laughs> Basically, it has a few questions, but it can be reduced to two basic questions. The first question is, what's the, what's the purpose of building the proof, which is not a, a, a deductive proof? It's not a deductive argument. So if this is argument for the Christians or for the theists, for the believers, what's, what's, the, what's the purpose of creating it? If, if someone is con already convinced to believe in God, why does he need or she argument for it if he or she already assumes the existence of God? And the other questions can be reduced to, to this is the, the argument against philosophers, that philosophers basically imagine something what is necessary and then philosophers claim that this is necessary. So these are two questions or maybe one question and one criticism. Jacek, would you would you like to respond to this according to Anselm? Uh, yes, I try. The first question is very short. Yeah, answer is very short. Uh, bec um, because I, as believer, I believe that God gave me intellect, yes, and faith, and to, and to, uh, these two kinds of uh, uh, the two kinds of. Uh, 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 experience and between intellect reason and uh, be and belief of faith there is no uh, opposition there is no contradiction but if you look at the uh, text of proslogion in the chapter one uh, chapter two sorry you find the very uh, specific aspect of Anselm's, uh, Anselm's uh, uh, intuition because Anselm's uh, say that uh, every one of us if uh, if uh, take only uh, in intellectual point of view, could uh, think that God doesn't exist. And Anselm tried to answer to the question why? Why it is possible? Yes, because intellect, uh, without the serving of, of faith, um, uh, is, is able to, is able to, Think that uh, uh, it is impossible uh, to get access because we can we cannot uh, uh, understand what is the nature or essence of God at full, yeah. And we must take we must wait for the uh, for the for the for the gift of God, 
declaring uh, our uh, declaring is is uh, is nature or is essence, and in the, only in this perspective we uh, find the answer to the question why someone uh, could uh, think that God doesn't exist. Uh, the the uh, sum up uh, 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 the, the response to the first question is in short. There is the specific relation between intellect, reason in one side, uh, or mind in one side, and uh, the, 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 the experience of faith. Yeah, the second question is very complicated, of course, because I look at the uh, Anselm's uh, argumentation and uh, Anselm's proof or argument in the perspective of philosopher, perspective of philosophy. But I think that uh, every one of us could find in the Anselm argument something what is uh, uh, what is uh, validity of, of of it for everyone, yeah, because Anselm tried to clarify in the logical perspective that we could uh, we could think about something what is uh, outside of our reality of course uh, there is uh, very important is the point of start because if i uh, i think that everything what i know is only the something what is uh, uh, in in sensual perspective yes uh, some uh, some things what could I uh, understand or no, no, only in the perspective of sensual experience? Uh, there is, there is the, there is the, 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 the specific, uh, the specific aspect. But we can, we, 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 but we, if we uh, think about uh, about the reality at all, we could find the answer or the the, the problem of the question: What is at the beginning, what what uh, what is in in, in um, perspective of universal point of view, and God, of course, in the perspective of Christianity, is a specific uh, thing about the God, specific understanding of God. But I think that there is the very very uh, validity for uh, everything uh, uh, that the one God is something what could find. Uh, uh, the answer to the question, what is the beginning and what is the ground or principle of all the reality? In short, of course, uh, the, the, there is the very complicated question because there is the point of view and, and uh, opinion about the philosophy at all. Yeah? If, if it's negative opinion, yeah, we have some uh, perspective and some consequences of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, thank you for this answer. And um, we need to move on. Wojciech Szczerba sent another question I posted on the on the chat. I, I will just read it, but um, we have no time to for you to answer it, uh, but maybe you find it beneficial. The, the question is, um, is unbelief possible at all if faith is understood as a gift of God, a priori, inner experience, something in, in the age in human? So, simply the, the question, but we need to move on to, to another talk. Thank you, Jacek. Thank you, everyone, for the questions.